Hi, I'm Warren Yates at YatesBanjos.com and today I would like to talk about the importance of string grooves. Now this is a new banjo that I'm building but I just wanted to touch base on this. Uh, I like to set a, um, if your banjo is made this way, I like to put in a new nut to where it just fits under pressure. Uh, of course solid but under pressure where it doesn't fall out. If you glue one of them and then you need to take it out and make an adjustment then whatever you glue to chances are it's going to break off in the bottom of it and then you'll end up cutting more of the neck away trying to fix it um, than you would like. This way you can slip it out make another one slip it back in you can shim the bottom there, there's different things that you can do. So let's talk about string grooves themselves. When I do a banjo setup, I always like to try to set the banjo up with the old strings that the banjo has so that any kind of improvement that I try to make on the banjo, I can see that it actually gets better. Uh, of course, I'll change the strings at the end and everything gets far better, but a good set of strings can make a banjo sound better but yet not fix any problems. So I always use that to last. If I can make it sound better with the old strings, then by all means it will sound better with new strings. The string sits in a groove that's cut into the nut. There's downward pressure that's pushed down onto it so that it allows the string to freely move in a vibration pattern. If the string does not leave the very tip end of the nut, then it may move back here uh, somewhere another position, which means that the string is going to vibrate and buzz everything from that point out that is in that groove. So the idea is to sharpen the grooves without lowering the action because your action may be in danger of being too low or it may be perfect. Uh, of course you can't always adjust but the idea is to sharpen the back side of the nut so that we get that downward pressure right there as it leaves the nut. Okay I made this as uh, just something to use as a, a visual so we can see what's going on. But let's say this is a very close-up picture of the nut and one of the grooves and this would be the string that goes into it. So if the string goes into it and say down this direction is the banjo and this direction is the tuning pegs then we want the string to lean back uh, towards the tuning pegs so that all of your pressure leaves on this point here. So they are sloped backwards. Now through whether they were ever cut right to start with or most likely it's the banjo if it needs set up then it's been played for years. And what happens is, is it vibrates enough that it eventually wears that groove and then it starts vibrating in here and sometime even way back here so you can kind of see what happens so if we have space up under here then it means that it's vibrating everything that it possibly can up under here which dulls your sound and it sounds like uh, if you were to take a piece of cotton and wrap it around one of your strings and then try to play it, it's catching all your vibration and just um, pulling sound away from it. And that's not what we want. So we're going to sharpen the edge with a file until we bring down uh, the slope of that so that we leave with our uh, last bit of pressure on this. Now, part of setup means that you may have to make a, a a new nut sometime. So let's say we've got it to where it fits, it's tight, 
we're at the right height that we we've measured you can put a little gauge under here and, and know where to mark it and then just work your way down and creep up on it but let's say I'm going to start a groove and I'll show you some tools that would be very beneficial to have okay if you can see I'm angling down towards the peg head and I'm leaving a distance here now this is not necessarily the right size uh, file which we'll go over here shortly um, but it's rigid so I can get it started now I've put lines where I believe that the string should go and of course it's hard to make a pencil line and it come exactly where it's supposed to so you can always say well a little way to this a little bit to that way a little bit to that way so this rigid one gets it started so and uh, all of my fret files come from Stuart McDonald. Uh, this one goes from like a 12 to a 16. And in string thickness, uh, like for instance, a 13, some people may say 13 gauge, uh, it's, it's really 13 thousandths thick is what it is. So anytime you see a number it like 0 0.013, it's 13 thousandths so we call it a number 13 okay this tool that I was just using is it's very rigid so I like that and you can buy a whole set of them if that's what you want uh, and they work great it's just uh, I kind of ended up with what I have but I like these little flimsy ones uh, and they also come from Stuart McDonald and they really do have a good round bottom and I'll, I'll explain the importance of that in just a minute but I use two different sizes uh, this one is a 24,000 so it's 0 0.024 so I only use that on the one string so even though I set my distance with that thinner one I'll clean it up and move in here now if you're doing a setup and not doing a new one it's the same process just put the file in there and and file it down just enough to be able to taper that back side down to make the string sit solid okay now if you notice I changed over files and this was a 0 0.016 so it's a 16 thousandths as long as you are bigger than the string without going crazy with it then you're you're good you don't want it to pinch in there because if it pinches or you create a groove uh, if you've got a pointed groove then you're going to only sit on two points and your string will catch and you can't um, you can't get it to slide because it'll be locked I've got a drawing here that I made up just to illustrate how the strings sit in a groove. Now the strings are to scale, uh, this being the fourth string, I like to use a 20, 13, 11, and 10. And if you'll notice the string groove is bigger than the string, but the string sits on the very bottom. So if the groove is cut bigger than the string then you see there's not going to be a uh, vibration along the side so if it's going to take anything it'll be in the bottom and the um, harder the pressure the longer it's going to stay sitting there rather than freed up to be able to move and vibrate now as far as how sh how deep should the groove go uh, there's a lot of people that believe certain things uh, and I can't say who's right I just believe that I am and here's my take on it if the string stays in the groove and doesn't fall out that's good if it seats with enough gap on the side that's good if it sits in the bottom and doesn't create a wedge like I was saying that you want to avoid 
uh, as long as that happens, it's solid. I don't care how tall this gets. It's just there. It rides along. It has nothing to do with the mechanic part of where the string sits. So the main thing is, is when you're doing a setup, you want a the correct file so that you can go back and slope it back to where uh, the string sits like it's supposed to and is freely open. Now, um, this also applies to the bridge, only the bridge slopes in the opposite direction. It slopes back towards the tailpiece because you want all the pressure of the string towards the other end of the banjo. That way you've got two points that are very solid from the bridge to the nut, you want it as solid and clean as it can get, and then they taper off. One being the peg head, one being the tailpiece. Okay, now one good thing about this tool being rigid, it also is tapered and has a little bit of cutting surface on the side. So if you do come in and somebody has one that's tall like this and you have to reach in there, uh, your straight file, that the ones I said I like that have such good grooves on the bottom, uh, they um, will often bind up and you just can't slide it through there. So to be able to taper those out a little bit in order to give you a little bit of working room, I like to run this one through there just so I can divide those walls and slant them at the top a little bit. But you could always take a file and go back and, and sand them if you really like that. It does look really good uh, halfway of the string. But it's, if it's up over the top or if it's way up in the air, it doesn't hurt anything. So, uh, you know, the thing about going down to halfway is what if your eyesight is like mine and it gets worse as you go and then you next thing you know you find out that you've slanted it too much. Uh, I mean, you've cut off too much of the top and then every time you hit a hot lick, this string here falls out. Well, that's not good. So I wouldn't become obsessive over um, this being dead at halfway. It's just not going to work that way because you can see uh, this looks like it would slope downhill, and it does, but it's not enough that you could really even see it once it's applied onto the banjo. It just simply looks straight across there. Now, your string uh, above the fret, and say so we're going to just draw an imaginary top of a fret here, you know, you have to play with that action and see what you think um, is ideal for that. It's better to be a little bit high but if you think about it, from the nut to the first fret uh, should be just a little bit taller than from the first fret to the second fret, if it were fretted. Well, I hope that helped you somewhere along the way. And um, give it a try. Get you some good files. Uh, you don't file them every time you use them. Just you know, because you won't have anything left. You'll saw your banjo in half, you know. So don't get carried away. It's just that when a banjo gets so bad and there's something wrong, uh, don't overlook string grooves in the nut and the bridge. Make sure they are properly sloped. And um, sometimes um, if you have uh, a little creaking sound up here, like you're tuning it, you hear it creak, 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 Okay, what you've got is friction happening right there. You can take something and put in the groove. A lot of people use pencil lead. I just never like to do that. Uh, to me, that just looks like cavities between teeth. I just, I can't stand it. It bugs me. So I'll use something a little cleaner and it could be some type of wax. It could be uh, Vaseline. Oh, white lithium grease, but you're only talking about wipe just a little smudge across there and then clean it all back off before you could ever fingerprint anything up. So you would be surprised how that would help you to keep your banjo in tune and not have that creaking to where it 
overshoots the mark or it undershoots the mark. So uh, give that a try, get you some good tools, and uh, uh, sound better. I'm Warren Yates at YatesBanjos.com. Very clean and long sustaining. Mm -hmm.